All right, so I'll explain this whole situation in a second, but it's very unlikely and strange, and I can't believe my luck, but I believe it's good karma in this circumstance. I'm just gonna film it on this camera to keep both my hands free. If I manage to get this, I'm gonna be so stoked, and then I'll explain exactly what happened and how I've ended up with this. Check that out, <laughs> All right. So, here's the easiest explanation there is. I'm out here fishing. I've just seen this fishing line on the rocks that someone's left behind, which is exactly why you don't leave fishing line behind. But in this circumstance, there's this heavy leader that's been tied off to the rocks and all just left here instead of being thrown in the rubbish. And I've actually gone to clean it up and as I've traced it out and followed it back to the water to unsnag it, I've realised that this mud crab has ended up tangled in the line. It's a massive green muddy and it was sitting right there on the edge of the bank and I could not believe my luck because I've just thrown my nets out to catch these guys and I've just ended up with a storing car without having to lift a finger. Elmira, don't. All right, here we go, squid on. Squid on. Start the day with a squid from the creeks. No bloody way. This one's the smaller one. Oh no, 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 no. Oh no, it got off. Well, I dropped the squid at the edge of the rocks there. I didn't bring a net. I didn't really think I was gonna get squid from a creek. So I have absolutely no idea how these are gonna go trying to pull them back in off a flat bank later on, but we can only try and see what happens. So I think I've got 10 meters of rope on me. Throw this out. I just found a crab hook under my foot too, so I'm gonna keep that. Did that work? I'm not happy with that one. Much better. Bro, I'm getting eaten alive, so I'm gonna chuck some longs on. For anyone that's never experienced sand flies before, they suck. They're tiny little midges that you can hardly see but you can absolutely feel them and then they burn you up for like two weeks after. Much better. Guthix, come here mate, come on.
Here's my net. Just sitting down in the water there, but as I went to pull it in, I saw this hole here, and these holes like that are perfect for mud crab to hide in. That is a mud crab hole all day long, so let's see if one's in there. Oh. So the easiest way to tell normally is when you hear this sound. Normally means they're fighting back when uh, the rod hits them, but in this instance, it's just me smacking the rock. All right, last one to check, and then we're going for a walk. Come on, come here. Nothing. Beautiful sunset. Just going down. Guffix, Elmira. Do you guys want some dinner right now that you're probably not going to eat? Or do you want to go in the crate and wait? See this bank here? It's where the water drops off a couple of meters, goes out a bit. The tide's going out, which is good, but it's neat, so it's probably not going to change much to what it is right now. You can see the mouth of the river up there, that's where we're going to walk up to. And I'm going to take the crab hook, I'm going to chuck a heap of lights on me, backpack on all the gear, everything I need, dogs will stay right up in there. We'll go get them. Come on, up, up. Come on, big boy. All right, tell everyone you're gonna be good and you're gonna bark if someone comes. Hey, okay, we'll see you soon with some muddies. Okay, so I've got my hook here. We're walking away from the car there. There's the creek behind me. I'm just gonna keep following the track for a little bit as we get closer up to the mouth. And we're literally just gonna walk through the mangroves. I'm covered in Bushman's, which is like a type of deep spray, which is the only way to keep sand flies off here. And we're just gonna walk through here and just try to find any holes that show signs of mud crabs living there. We'll poke around. I've got a heap of lights on me to make sure you guys can see all this clearly. I'll show you anything that sparks interest in me. And we'll see what we come up with. I'm aiming, I've got one already, but I'm aiming to get three to maybe four. So I would like to feed my girlfriend as well as her mother. And then whoever else wants some after that. So we'll have a look now. All right, so this sort of thing right here is what we're looking for. Where we get nice big pools of water. This is much easier on a spring tide because you end up with lots more pools like these where the water really drains right out. Tonight, we're working with what we got. If that right there isn't one of the most beautiful sunsets you've ever seen, I'll be pretty impressed because that's pretty good. Got a small muddy. This one we'll leave alone, but just a bit of a show for you guys. That's what we're looking for there. It's a small one, well and truly undersized. Small stingray here. See ya, mate. Quick check under here. Nothing. Beside this tree, nothing. Keep looking. Okay, there's a slightly bigger one there going into its hole. Just disappearing now. So I'm just walking along 
And this is exactly what we're looking for here. So this one's probably going to retreat back in its hole, but I'll be able to get it. There it goes. Just checking. There's no other ones around. Cool. So I'm going to put the camera up on that tree branch there. Shine it back to me. I'm going to pull that crab out and then I'll give you guys a look. I know it's dark. I'm going to record as best I can. But that's a good start. There's one good muddy there. I should be able to get that one out. No worries. So I'm just aiming to get behind the crab. All right, it's coming. Oh, dropped it. Oh, wow, this is a deep hole. This is what I get for messing around with the camera beforehand, though. Crabs just disappear. All right, so an absolute bummer on that one, but I'm going to have to leave it alone on that crab there because I can't find it in the hole. So I'm convinced that it's come back up out of the hole and that it's gone into the pool of water. But because the mud's so brown and sooty, it's just a guessing game on where it is and I cannot find it for the life of me. So... It's kind of my own fault for trying to set the camera up to film capturing it, but that's the whole point of doing this. So I'll move on from this one. I'm going to try to remember this hole. I'll leave some sticks or something to try to find it on the way back and see if the water does settle. But to be honest, it's probably going to take all night to settle. But you never know, it might be enough for me to come back past and the crab's sitting on top of the pool or something, and then we'll be able to grab it. So we're going to move on and try to find another one somewhere else. This one here is definitely too small. It don't need to be about 130 mil, probably across the back. It needs to be 150. So we'll let it go. Smaller muddy right there. That'll be the female. I'm hoping that's just where that one decided to burrow. Looks like this is going to be her hole though. Yeah, and she's going in there right now. Oh. We'll leave her to it there. Here it comes. Here he comes, he's a good male. Oh, it's probably a bit close to my face. But, there's a good male Muddy there. Pretty happy with that one, so he's gonna go away. He's well and truly, he's probably about 170 across the top. It's a good male, so happy days. I'm gonna walk back to camp now. I've got heaps of firewood. I can hear Elmira crying and I'm probably like 500 meters away, so I'm gonna walk back over there. We're gonna check up on the dogs. I've still got the nets in the water, see if there's any crabs sitting in them. That'd be awesome if there's one sitting on them. A lot of fire, recharge all the batteries, and then we're gonna head back out. Yeah, that was a daunting old walk back to the car. I didn't bring my phone, so in pitch black, he's gauging it fully off the river for your bearings, but here's the car. Camp light's still on, and these two are gonna be very happy to see me. Hey, come on, Guthix, come on, big boy. Come on, mate, I oh, know. Come on. Big jump, come on, big jump. Come on, it's okay. Big jump, you can do it. Good boy. All right, I'll just check the first net. Nothing in it. I can see with my flashlight from shore there. If I've just gone over the second one, same thing, flashlight from shore, and I can see a muddy on it. All right, I'm just going to try to pull this with my head torch. Boom! It's a very good buck. Hopefully you guys can see that there. If not, I'm going to rattle him forward, I'll grab him out. Then I'll give you guys a look. He's got some big, beautiful claws on him. Oh. He's trying very hard not to come out of the net. I'll turn my light off. Go in purely on that one, so there you go. That one's out of the net. That's my first ever mud crab in a net, if I'm being perfectly honest. I've never um, never caught one in a net before. Never tried. Always just hooked him. Hopefully he lets go. He's not letting go of the net there. All right, so I'll take this guy up to camp there. And we'll get him on ice, and then I'm going to give that other net a pull. I'll probably throw this back out. Beautiful. We'll take him up over here to camp. 
That's a beautiful money. Hopefully, hopefully Ellen that's got one. Guthix, what do you reckon, mate? Come have a look. What's this? What's this? Wee, don't get done, mate. Don't get done. Mmm, mmm, mmm. Mmm, mud crab for dinner, you reckon? Okay, let's open the esky up. That's buck number three. Guthix, watch out, mate. So, hey, watch out, he's gonna get ya. All right, so we'll chuck him there. Buck on buck. I've got another, watch out, I've got another buck in my bag, so that's awesome. I'm not one for big fancy rubbing sticks together. All right, it's just gone past midnight. I've been back at camp for probably about three hours now, if I'm being honest. As soon as I got back and we got that muddy out of that net, I chucked everything on charge, all my camera gear, and I've just been chilling out, having a beer, listening to a bit of music, hanging out with the dogs, and then I decided to have a bit of a flick with the rod. I managed to catch a yellowfin brim first up, just a small one. I put that back, I cast back out there, and then I ended up getting a shark, just a small shark as well. I released that and put that back out there. And I was thinking, surely the fish gods are going to reward me, and they did. They gave me a orange spot cod straight out the estuary, perfect size for dinner, so I was super chuffed. But because it's so late now, I've had to have obviously a late dinner, so I've just wrapped it up in foil, a bit of lemon, garlic, butter, all that sort of stuff. I've just got it cooking away on the fire there right now. And we'll give it a few minutes, let it do its thing, and then we'll have a look at that, and I'll get stuck into that for my dinner. Mm -mm. So I'm trying to film and use my hands to be productive at the same time, but dum dum dum. Mm. No, he's actually bloody bellissimo. Let's have a squeeze it some more. Chose the worst spot to set up my chair. I'm getting smoked out something chronic. Oh man, my eyes look dodgy. And I've just been chilling here. A couple of mid-strength beers, but that smoke on the fire, it's got me going. I, need to, I probably should have scaled this first, but I didn't. So it is what it is. That is a beautiful fish. Not the biggest fan of scales though. I didn't scale it out of pure laziness. All right, last mouthful to the camera. I'm now, I'm just gonna eat the rest in my own time. I've sort of just half set the swag up now. Guthix is enjoying that. Elmira's up there in the crate. My beer's over there, which I need to go get. Fire's on its last two logs. I'm getting through this fish. So with that being said, I'm gonna go to bed shortly. I'll see you guys.